Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you just how easy it is to make cranberry at home. I don't have a blowtorch, so I'm going to show you how I still get that delicious caramelized sugar on top. Kinda messed this one up a bit, but it was fun to make and it turned out delicious. And I think that's the important part. If you're new here, please like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss new videos when I upload. We've been making a couple changes to the channel, including a name change. We are no longer cooking with Nick. Searching for and finding Cooking with Nick on YouTube is apparently really hard and it was really a tentative name to begin with. We are now Feed and Teach. <laughs> it probably should be Eat and Learn because I'm the one eating all the food and I learned so much doing these videos. But anyways, let's get started. The very first thing we need to do is preheat our oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 162 degrees Celsius. Then get the rest of the ingredients together because this recipe goes by really quick. After that, I'm going to measure out a cup of heavy cream. I'm making six small portions so a cup is good. Yep, that look heavy. Go ahead and pour it into a saucepan. This is going on medium heat for a few minutes. We want the cream to be barely simmering. If it's hotter than a simmer, then it will scramble your eggs. I'm sure scrambled eggs are nice, but you don't want them in your creme brulee. Just get that on and reduce the flames to low, then we can move on to the next steps. And to separate egg yolks. This recipe calls for three yolks, so I'm just going to grab three eggs. These are super fresh. This is my preferred way of separating yolks. Crack the egg over a bowl and just let the whites flow through your fingers. Fresh eggs have firmer yolks and whites that hold together, so everything separates neatly and the yolks don't break as easy. Separating eggs this way feels messy, but it's way more efficient. Next, I'm adding 2 thirds cup of sugar. Now, we start together until most of the sugar is dissolved. I really started liking creme brulee when I started making it myself. That's me with a lot of foods. I always had it in the back of my head that you know it would be eggy. I really don't like eggy tasting food. And there's stuff we can do to get rid of the egginess, but this this is really delicious. It's rich and satisfying. There are other methods to make creme brulee, but personally I find this one to be the easiest. Alright, most of the sugar is dissolved, and I think the cream is just about ready. When it's simmering at the sides of the pan, it's ready. If it's too hot at this stage, just let it cool a bit. It should be around 70 degrees Celsius. Now I'm adding the heavy cream while we sim, but only small amounts at a time. It's important to keep the cream at simmering temperature because the egg would begin to cook if it was any higher. My bowl isn't heavy enough, so it keeps moving around. So, add the cream in increments until it's all done. Creme brulee really only needs three ingredients, egg, sugar and cream, and it will still be delicious. I'll be adding a tablespoon of vanilla for additional flavoring and a pinch of salt. If you've ever had any of your desserts taste flat, it's usually because salt is missing. Whisk that together to dissolve everything and that's done. Now this recipe should give us about a cup and a half of mixture, so I guess it's mostly cream. Now 
So another way to make creme brulee is to use a blender. I'm using an immersion blender, but a regular blender on low speed works really well too. You want, you want to use a narrow container like this one to prevent any splashing. And the first steps are the same. Grab three eggs. Separate yolks from whites, place in the container. I'm really starting to like how these egg yolks feel. Add a two thirds cup of sugar, tablespoon of vanilla. And I'm going to do something different with this batch. Instant coffee. Coffee creme brulee is the best. One tablespoon of instant coffee is good. So it's similar to using a whisk. Let the blender run and I'm going to add the heavy cream in small increments. Still managed to do some splashing. Add all the rest of the cream and blend one last time. All right, that's done. Next step, we need a sheet tray or a baking tin. We just need something with relatively high sides because we are going to bake our creme brulee in a water bath. Now I'm going to be using these porcelain ramekins to cook the creme brulee. I like the small serving sizes, but if you don't have ramekins, you can use teacups, mugs, small bowls or even glass jars. I'll try a mug later. You have to bear in mind that cooking time will change with the size of the container. Go ahead and pour the creme brulee mixture into the ramekins. I'm leaving a little headroom. Next, pour boiling water into the baking tin. The water should be halfway up the ramekins. If you can manage to do this step in your oven, please do because that is way easy and safer. You don't have to move around with all that boiling water. These are small and will take about half an hour to cook at 325 degrees, but check on them a few times before they finish. I have some leftover mixture, so I'm going to try and cook it in a mug. giving it a little bit of marbling because I just couldn't help myself. This goes in a hot water bath and goes in the oven too. Now, doing creme brulee leaves with a good amount of egg whites. You could use some in your creme brulee instead of all yolks, but it wouldn't be as creamy and it might even taste eggy. Just freeze them. They keep for a long time and you can thaw them out and make egg white omelets or whatever else you use egg whites for. You can think about it while they're in the freezer. It's been around 25 minutes and our creme brulee is done. It should set around the sides of the ramekin and the center should still be jiggly. That's how you know they are done. Put 
could have your creme brulee warm, but it tastes much better after you chill it. So these will go in the fridge to chill for about two hours. After they're chilled, we want to add that nice caramelized sugar layer. You could do this with just sprinkling granulated sugar on top and putting it under a broiler if you have one, but that always overcooks my creme brulee and the sugar melts unevenly. A blowtorch is a pretty convenient way to caramelize sugar on top of your creme brulee, but I don't own one, so let's melt some sugar. This is half a cup of granulated sugar. Spread it out evenly in your pan and place it on very low heat. We want this to melt slowly and not burn, so let most of it melt before stirring. When it's all melted and the color gets brown like this, it's ready. Top the chilled creme brulee and swirl it around to spread it evenly. And this was the biggest mistake I made. I placed the caramelized sugar and all the other chilled creme brulee at once, which cooled the sugar down really quick. So it didn't spread in a nice thin layer. By the time I got to the last one, the sugar was barely moving. I heated up back the sugar for my mug creme brulee and that worked out. Anyway, let's try this. Ooh, ASMR. The smell is extremely nice. That sugar tastes really good. It's a bit too thick and crunchy, but I still appreciate it. Super rich and creamy. I love this. Next is my favorite. Sugar layer is much thicker with this one. Let's give it a taste. Yup, that's scratching every itch. You could skip the sugar on top and just caramelize the top with a little extra high heat from the oven and it still would be delicious. I actually prefer this method. This was caramelized then partially frozen, which is also nice. Anyhow, make sure you give this one a try, but you know, learn from my mistakes and make sure to have some fun with it. <laughs>